Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'd like to welcome you to the top eight feature match in Yu-Gi-Oh! Overdose's fifth Dueling Network tournament. I'm joined today by Alistair Albans in this feature match between Jeremy Thibu and Kumar Dave. Alistair wants you to start off by saying hello. Hi guys, not that you can hear me as I uh, figured out last time, but uh, I'm here doing some commentary. It's going to be a good time. All right, so uh, this fe this uh, this feature match pits uh, Jeremy Thibu's wind-up deck against Kumar Dave's six samurai deck. After the ban, after the new ban list, uh, samurais did get a little bit of a boost. Uh, a lot of people are flocking to them. Uh, not, a, I'm not gonna say a lot, but uh, more people than were in the previous format. And uh, that's why I wanted to cover this feature match just to get a sense of how they roll. It's ironic, I think, a little bit that uh, they're pitted against last format's top deck windups, yeah. a deck that pe most people thought was go was dead going into this event. Uh, right. But I mean, it, it's doing pretty well, I think. I think there are uh, two windups in top eight. Am I right? I believe so. Is it? Wait, wait. Isn't it three? It's definitely three. Is Dylan there's playing a, windups? There's a mirror match. There's a mirror match, and then there's this. True story. <laughs> that makes <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> All right. So yeah, no. Not stupid. That is right. I think then then it it has the plurality. I think because uh, there's waters. Uh, oh, I have to check what Dylan's playing, but I know Brian's playing Burn. Desmond's playing Karakuri. Uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Well, alrighty. Oh, never mind. There's two. A long time to think because of uh, the possibilities of Starlight Road. Although opponent is not running it. I'll, I'll, note, um, I'll note, by the way, that uh, there's two waters in top. So there's two waters, two windups. Uh, Burn, uh, Six Samurai, Karakuri, and... We're going to see a shark reveal here, I believe? Something else. Oh, and Samurai. Or, or that factory. The factory's good enough. Um, one of the things I was talking to you about, Chris, right before this match started was the fact that the windup deck now heavily relies on uh, a factory tanky combo, basically having an activated effect at all times plus a factory as possible, kind of like Destiny Draw, malicious, same ratios. Um, and against Samurais, it's probably much harder to pull that off. Although, as we're seeing here, we saw no turn one Sheen and a set monster from Samurais, which is super out of the ordinary. Um, I'm looking at his deck right now. And traditionally, the only monsters that Samurais have to set are the Tuner and uh, Kageki, the 2,000 and 1,800 guys, I believe is their defense, something like that. And um, that's not where the Samurai player wants to be. However, in this situation, I guess it's saving them a little bit of damage, and or it's just Spirit of the Six Samurai. Well. Okay. Well, pro, that I don't understand. Pro um, reads, Alistair. I'm incredibly confused right now. <laughs> Uh, I think anybody who watches this would be with me on that one. Like, I don't really understand what just happened. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> so things are looking very bright for the wind-up player here. Um, barring something like, I don't know, MST into an Exceed, or, I mean, not an Exceed, uh, a Synchro, Xi'an, something, I don't know. Um... Because he still does have the two back rows. I don't know how relevant they are, but Heavy's gone now, so... Well, let's... let's... He's from the wind player. Oh, okay. They were just set. Okay. Well, things are just weird. Well, what were you going to say? I was going to say, well, I mean, it depends what he drew or whatever, but I just wanted to, to make special mention of the fact that Samurais don't really have many plays. All they have is the Sheehan and... Uh... Well, you'd be surprised. With the uh, uh, Asceticism build such as the one we're seeing in use right now. Yeah, the plays are pretty straightforward, but the dynamics of every game that you play against it, while annoying on the whole, just because the nature of cards like Sheehan and the Cherry Beast are annoying, there can be some weird things, like, uh, for instance, the little 1700 Anishi guy mm -hmm. that bounces things, spell speed 2. He can set up some really complex things, and the fact that uh, Sheehan's continuous effect saves himself from destruction, it can, you gotta, you know, you gotta calculate stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it seems like a deck that, um, well, first and foremost, uh, does have some consistency to it because of the asceticisms and, and the new, and the, I forget what the road is, oh, Sheehan Signal. Uh, so, I mean, it's got some consistency to pull off these plays a lot, but, uh, I mean, 
it seems more so than anything else that if you're gonna if you if you intend to find success with samurais, it's gonna be a lot of trying to set up for the right amount of damage to push for game. Right, and as everybody knows, yeah, that's very true. As everybody knows, um, most decks are just far better going first than they are going second. However, you have decks like wind ups, uh, fire fists, waters. I guess even cash dragons, which I was playing today. Um, you have a lot easier of a time going second, just because, just, I guess, of the nature of your deck. Uh, but with a deck like Samurai's, before it's able to stick the Sheen or whatever it's trying to stick, any interruption is pretty huge when you don't have any way to defend yourself. Um, and seeing as a lot of the decks now that run back rows at all are really trap heavy, uh, such as windups, which I've seen running upwards of 13 to 14 traps, it can be really hard to get stuff going. And seeing as he didn't get a first turn Shin or the Cherry Beast or whatever he wanted to get, uh, I don't think this game is going to go too well for him. And Barkeon's not where you want to be against uh, windups either. Although, if he's able to protect the Barkeon, he'll have something to attack with guaranteed because uh, the other the windup players, Phoenix Chains, Mirror Force, D Prison, etc., are all pretty dead. Five cards in graveyard means two negates. Um, and if he flips any of his back rows, that's three negates. Not that I think it's ever going to come to that. But right. And we, we're seeing some cool combos. The wind-up combos, I should talk about this, have gotten a lot more skill-intensive. Like, holy crap. Um, I've seen people on Duelist Grounds asking, asking for a combo lists, and, you know, there's really just no such thing. Like, nobody has a comprehensive combo list. Uh, at least not yet. And I don't... I'm not sure if there ever will be one just because there's so many dynamic situations that can come up especially with a new card that's being thrown in like wind up warrior um it adds a whole bunch of new you know dimensions i guess you know uh, and volcasaurus is the main reason why i love lineups right now by the way that card is it busted. Deadly. yeah it is amazing but uh you know what I, I gotta say um a lot of a lot of hype regarding uh Windups uh, coming coming into like because there there are some loyal windup people who really want to run with it. Uh, a lot of a lot of that focuses on uh, Summoner Monk, and I'm really glad to see that Sharpman has foregone Summoner Monk altogether. I I, I don't right. I don't like that card, and I'm glad that he's not using. No, it. it's uh, definitely one of those hope things go really well for me cards, and even if they do, it still doesn't guarantee anything kind of cards. Right. Um, and what we just saw was the huge other new addition to the one deck, which actually there's a video of me with a friend on YouTube predicting that this could happen in the future, where windups get nerfed and they have to run Gaia Charger with new rank fives that come out. And sure enough, look at this. I mean, you have just the sheer power of Gaia Charger being shown. Like, all right, Phoenix Chain in the game, the most broken rank five out there right now. And then, oh, just overlay. You know, I mean, Gaia Charger says any rank five or rank six in your extra deck automatically has the added, added effect of being able to, to attack that turn, piercing damage, and oftentimes gained attack power, as you see with, uh, like, Exabeetle, for instance. Absolutely. So, this is pretty sweet for the Samurai player. He gets to bounce for free, but the fact that he's still floating there, so, I mean, I don't think it's really much. At least he's probably going to be able to clear the rat off the board to prevent any free exceeds from happening. But, I mean, he's got to hope the last card in his hand, I guess, is a back row. Because uh, that's really what he needs. And even still, like, say he's able to bounce a whole bunch of stuff. I believe it's once per turn regardless. But say he is, you know, it's like he has to draw threats off the top. And why? I mean, uh, Samurai doesn't really have threats off the top. It's not a deck that top decks well at all. Barring maybe a slow copy of, uh, what's that card called? The Dragon Trap. Um... Him. I can't even see the name of it. It's a really popular card. The one that's special summons two from the graveyard. The the return one. I know what you're talking about. Whatever it's called. I don't. I'm so mad that I don't know the name of it because it was a really popular card for a couple years. We've had samurais around for a very long time, and I think mostly everybody has loathed 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 their existence. Ooh, clutch heavy storm. Item. Hell yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter much. I there aren't many cards. That you can, that samurai can have to come back right now. <laughs> yeah, against a 2600 attack monster and only two cards in hand and an Ishii gone, as far as I know, uh, yeah, it's not looking so bright. He's just hoping to do something like draw off a quick card right here. Yeah, 
Uh, if he hits Grandmaster or um, Keyzon, we might, might, and I stress might have a game, just because he's still looking at one card to his opponents for next turn. Absolutely. And this is wind-ups, where he has the Tour Guide left, two Rats left, I believe, Avarice left, uh, and a slew of back rows. And he didn't even hit it, so it's just looking really bleak. No. Oh, okay, there's an <laughs> up the top for Shardman, so yeah, the duel's over. Yep. Well, are you as excited as I am at the prospect of wind-ups? You know that one of them will progress past top eight because the other one's a mirror match. Uh, and you know that, uh, you know, here we are up one game. Uh, I think it's, a, I mean, I think it, I'm just wondering. Exciting to see a deck so savagely nerfed uh, by the ban list still doing well. Let me say that I have some experience in this area, and that's always a good feeling. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I have not as much experience as you, but I have quite a bit of success with a deck that was considered destroyed by a ban list and run by very few individuals at a YCS immediately after the ban list. Uh, I'm, cool, of course, talking about plants. Yeah. I think that's not nearly as severe as wind-ups. That's why I don't like the comparison uh, 100% necessarily. When... Um, I guess when the better players saw the ban list for that, I believe it was a September 2011 or March 2011, uh, September 2011, I believe. Um, we saw it and we were like, well, Tengu's still at three. Formula's legal. Um, Trishal is still very much so legal. The combo's still are there. Lone Fire one's not the biggest deal. We still have three tour guides. We have we now have exceeds to go along with those tour guides, including Levier the Sea Dragon, which was just insane at the time. And it's just like, Okay, well, we can do something with this. BLS is also still around. Yeah. With windups, it's not as apparent. And, you know, we thought it was apparent to people back then, and then only, you know, like, I think 10 of us or some absurdly small number out of nearly 1,000 players decided to run the plant deck for that, and then we all topped. Um, so I'm not sure if the same or anything similar is going to happen with this. Also important to note that at that time, I think doing that arc was still very new. It only been around for maybe four months or so. And uh, maybe half a year. And it's just like the information sharing wasn't quite on the same level as it is now. So, with especially with your tournaments, now that we get to see early results before major tournaments happen, um, the surprise factor that Wimes might have kind of diminishes. However, I am, I am happy to see them doing well. I, I, as I said uh, a little bit earlier, I think it's much more skill intensive to run windups now. The combos are definitely not what they used to be. For instance, turn one Magician Shark often just equals getting Rabbit and passing, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, setting up with I'm looking at the... Wow. So, oh, you know... All right, I want to touch on something in a, mo in a moment, but uh, I'll say that... Uh... Oh, never mind. I was looking at prices of X Saber Invoker, wondering if it goes up. Anyway, so... All right, so you, everyone knows that Gateway is the most annoying card for Samurai yeah. to draw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'll say that there was a time before Gateway, and United filled that role like quite spectacularly of being that card that was just so annoying for them to draw and plus all right. for no reason. Right, exactly. I mean, he just potted greeted twice in his turn, which absolutely. I mean, even if he's not doing anything spectacular after afterwards, like. What, making a land noise or something? Yeah. Actually, that probably wouldn't be the worst. Uh, Samurais often have some extra spells to ditch in the form of asceticisms and stuff like that. Um, and, and he does run in the deck. is pretty good against windups. That's true. I wonder if he does. He run, He has it in his extra deck. If he's got spells yeah. in his hand, I think it's a good play. Yeah, yeah, probably. Especially if he has, I don't know, some kind of protection. Um, on the other hand, he might just have... If he doesn't... If we don't see him synchro... Yeah, there's a very good chance he has the Megatama, right? I was going to say, that's the Solemn, right? Or, yeah, the, the Samurai Solemn. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Right. Well, quasi-Solemn. It, it doesn't stop some of the stuff you wanted to, but it stops a lot of the stuff you do. Uh, Ooh. Okay, sure. Well, I guess if his opponent's going to go set anyway, then Lindois wouldn't have been doing much. So keeping this open, as well as Megatama online, if he does have it, assuming he does have it, wow, that's unusual from... Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with randomly dust tornadoing, but we'll see how it works for him. So like, like if, you, if you look at uh, the Wanda Player's deck list, there are the full copy, uh, full three copies of Phoenix Chain, and it's generally a good idea to save little spot removal, back row removal for cards like that. 
Oh. For instance, right here, he would love to have it. Yeah, okay. Well, Solomon, I guess. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair. Yep. I'm not sure why Sharpman would put so many cards on the board and have seen seven right in front of him. Right. I, I mean, he, even with Solomon, it's not where you want to be. Um, wow. Um, well, this is rather unusual. <laughs> is it Megatama? Oh, it was warning. That's really odd, then. Um, yeah, this guy sends some weird signals when he when he makes his turn one plays, you know? Well, I think that's just about game. I think the face down is probably either the war... Well, probably a warrior or a magician. Uh, uh, you, you're forgetting about Snowman Eater? All right, he does side deck. Which he's side deck. I totally forgot this is game two. Which I'm pretty sure is going to destroy... Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that... What's his name? Kumar? I think he just loses right now. If, he's, given that snow, yeah. yeah. That's snow that was a good and call. I totally forgot. Yeah. I don't know what he was thinking there. <clears throat> well, let me ask you this. Uh, because I totally forgot to go over this. I mean, what do you think that he sided in besides the snowman? Do you think he touched those level limits? Besides the snowman. Uh, level limit is a tricky card. But I guess it serves the same purpose as Messenger of Peace against um, against Samurai. So yeah, yeah, I, I would uh, assume that he sided in two Snowman Eaters, possibly one Thunder King, possibly not because he was going second. Although it's a decent chance. I think he sided in that, that maybe Compulsion, I want to say. Maybe Deep Prison, I want to say. And possibly Dust Tornado. But Taking again, out what? Really, what? I mean, what would he take out? That's that's where it gets tricky. When, uh, when you're playing, I guess going second, it gets a little bit easier. You can take out your two card cardies because they're generally very dangerous going second against the deck if you put a lot of damage on board. Right. Um, duality is not where you necessarily want to be against Samurais because, I don't know about you guys, when I play Samurais, the first spell that somebody shows me, I just snap negate it. Uh, I don't, I don't play that. I don't play any games with that. Trying to bait anything, I don't. I hate. There's nothing worse than the feeling of somebody playing duality, you letting them go through, and then just like them not playing anything for the rest of the turn. Like, I think this is two zero. Yeah, this is this is rough. So I'm assuming he doesn't have enough samurais in his graveyard to bounce the Shien. Sam's do lose the Shien, as somebody just pointed out. Wow, yeah. I didn't expect this matchup to necessarily go this way, although I do suppose things get better for the wind-up player uh, games two and three just on account of Snowman, Thunder King, and Level Limit if he did choose to side deck Level Limit. Well, we saw that Snowman definitely get there. And, yeah, uh... Snowman is an amazing card. Um, the only time it doesn't shine is, as I said earlier, when they have multiple Samurais on the board to protect their own Shein from destruction. Uh, okay, I would just let it go through. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason to, to risk, like, a random, what could he have? Uh, I guess the Samurai player could have absolutely nothing. Or he could have a Phoenix Chain. Yeah, a Phoenix Chain. I'd like to see it after it's done. I mean, all of my reads that I thought were pretty spot on have been in totally incorrect thus far. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't really blame me for not reading a set Spirit of Six Samurai on turn one with three back rows. Like, that just doesn't... You know, I thought you know, it was pretty obvious. You don't see that every day. Another snowman eater as well. Things are locked up. All right. Well, oh my gosh! Dark hole Phoenix chain. Oh. All right, well, I mean, he's still down two cards because he gets his draw phase next turn, and then he's got three. And but still, like, that was ex and... Oh, he kept in the oh, card car. Okay. Well, I mean, I can understand why he would do such a thing. I, I guess maybe if he decided to level him at the same time, but also you have to think. You gotta really fight for space when you're siding so many cards, so taking out the questionable cards such as card car make the siding process a lot easier, at least in my mind. And I think this is something a lot of uh, players, new and old, overlook. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. That should, stuff. should be game. Should be, right? The only thing I, I think, think so. that is safe is, uh, well, it depends uh, what he does exactly, but right. Mirror could be his only Mirror out. Force could be very real. It depends I, if he does Soul of Silver Mountain. Oh, I, I feel like, yeah, well, he can't make Soul of Silver Mountain here. Never mind. So, never yeah. mind. But he's doing the safe play just because he knows how bad of a time Samurais have top decking. Um, he's not going for game this turn, but he's, you know, dodging Mirror Force. I guess Mirror Force still does hurt him a bit um, just because he loses all the materials on Zen Mains. Or he could you know, blow up his whole back row. But I'm pretty sure 
I mean, I want to say the game's over right here, but, I mean, we've been wrong the last three times, so. <laughs> like, okay, that's it, I think. Alright, can we see a little script here? Prison, maybe? No. Nah, yeah, okay. It's, that's, that's it. That is Alright, that was an awesome match. I really like the way things turned out. Uh, I think everybody likes to see Samurai lose. <laughs> Not that I tried to spread hate to the Samurai player. He obviously did something right to get where he was. But I just didn't... I didn't really see things playing out, you know. I thought it, I thought it was gonna be a lot different. Yeah, me too. But uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, like, but uh, you know what? This is still great because now we have two windups going into the top four, and uh, a very real possibility that they'll walk away with the championship. And after everyone said they were a dead deck type, so uh, yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Anyway, listen, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off right now. But Alistair, I wanted to thank you for doing this with me. I appreciate having you. Would love to have you back anytime. No problem. Take it easy, man.